We're at Globe Forum with Don Iveson, former mayor of Edmonton and advisor to cooperators on resilience. Don, great to see you. Nice to see you, John. What's been your key message at Globe? Well, you know, it's been great coming to an event where obviously the federal government announcing our emissions reduction plan is a huge step in the right direction on transition. And so um, also to see how far transition economies have developed and transition finance is progressing. So I think there was a celebratory uh, theme there and, and we showed up not to be downers, but to say, well, we also need to now pay heed to adaptation and specifically resiliency finance, which is um, harder than transition finance because the price signals aren't as clear, the regulatory environment is more nascent, and yet with the disasters that we've seen in my own city uh, and in my province over the last decade and then in BC and other parts of the country, there is massive urgency around adaptation with the weather of today, much less the weather that's coming even if we achieve our 2030 and 2050 goals. Do we need to recalibrate the dollars that are spent on resilience versus mitigation? Yeah, of that 130, 140 trillion, uh, very, very little of it is earmarked for resiliency right now. So the share needs to grow and, and we need to crowd in more capital to it. A lot of it's concession capital right now because the paybacks aren't clear, but we believe there are paybacks in terms of uh, reduced costs to governments going forward. Now those are liabilities that the parliamentary budget officer says aren't priced in yet. Um, and there's, you know, we've done some deep thinking about it and, and I think there's something there, otherwise I wouldn't have joined this work. What needs to be done to create those price signals and market mechanisms to allow that capital to flow? So I think this is where insurers have an interesting role in this, not because they can necessarily produce the cash flow, but they can model the risk avoidance. And then if everybody agrees that an infrastructure intervention that reduces fire or flood risk um, is also going to reduce losses, then premiums will go down. And if we can model cumulatively what that is, and that's a net savings to a community, then it gets easier for a mayor and a city council to uh, decide to make an infrastructure intervention that uh, creates those net savings to the community. So I think uh, some of them may be indirect like that, but uh, there's also a lot of potential around nature-based solutions upstream where you know doing the right green infrastructure uh, upriver means you need less gray infrastructure upgrades um, in, the, in the urbanized areas. So systems level thinking will be necessary for this and that's where provincial and federal governments as sort of uh, watershed uh, leaders will, will need to play an active role in creating the space for this kind of investment. So clearly federal and provincial governments which steward watersheds in this country will have a, a critical role to play to establish sort of regulatory space and systems level thinking to unlock this kind of investment. Do Canadian cities need new fiscal powers to start to finance these sorts of investments in different ways? So I would always say as a former mayor that tax increment financing for a neighborhood whose property values can be recovered with a, um, and then have that uplift earmarked to pay for a piece of infrastructure. So instead of revitalization infrastructure, it's resiliency infrastructure. So some of the tools municipalities have in their toolkit are actually a really good proxy for the um, disaggregated co-benefits of resiliency investment. Coming away from Globe, what do you think we need to do and can do in the next, say, 12 months to better address resilience needs? So we're going to be assembling as broad a coalition uh, as we can of people who are interested in cracking resiliency finance. Uh, we're going to be looking for pilot projects and we're already talking to a number of municipalities about um, working with them on some of their existing uh, adaptation infrastructure to see if there's a role for private capital and projects that are already underway. So we are pro at the prototyping stage right now, looking actively for partners. We want to build a pipeline uh, uh, of investable resiliency resiliency infrastructure projects and where our goal is actually to see if we can model the first investment within the next year because we need to rapidly scale this way faster than transition finance came came to this stage we need we need to do in a year or two what took 10 for transition finance so no small no small challenge before us but many hands make light work no no small challenge uh, no time to waste don thanks so much pleasure